G'day to you. It is a Friday and I'm hoping you've had a fantastic week. This is yet another episode of the Ask and Prosper show. So this show has been recorded live on Facebook where people are going to be asking me questions a little bit later on. But if you're just watching this part, you're watching uh, the replay. So just type in the number two so that we know the people that are tuning in. G'day my man, Luke. How's it going, brother? Um, this is the Ask and Prosper show and you do realize it's a Friday and you get to ask me questions regarding how to start, scale and grow a business. But today we really want to talk about starting from the bottom, all right? Because a lot of people are having problems with, you know, where to start, how to get around, um, you know, to starting a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And it just all seems like it's out of reach for them. And I see Luke Moroni. How's it going, brother? I saw you on TV on um, the ABC thing and they were talking about uh, cryptocurrency. You, you, you segued in right at the start. Um, that's pretty cool, my man. Hope you've been doing well and hope um, you know, you've know you had a fantastic week. I've checked out a few of your live videos. I will maybe go through some of them over the weekend. Um, that's when I really have time to consume other people's content. During the week, I'm all in consumption mode. Um, yeah, and then how it all works out. I wish I understood all that cryptic currency stuff, man. I literally don't. And I choose not to. <laughs> but I respect you, man, for, you know, giving it a fair go. I see Glenn Ozzy Lawrence is in the house as well. Glad to actually catch you live. Um, and I'm really hoping that you've had a fantastic week. And um, everything else is working out perfectly for you there. So this is the Ask and Prosper show where you get to ask me questions. And um, I will try and answer them. And as, and as much as, um, you know, I know. But maybe just keep it. Keep it light, keep it PG, keep it, um, you know, um, you know, stuff that we normally talk about, which is essentially making your business profitable and enjoyable. So while you're thinking up questions to ask me, this show is going to go on for an, an hour. Um, so just um, hang in there. Now, Glenn says, hi, my friend. It's been awesome. Sorry for my absence. Well, that's pretty fine. Life happens. Um, you know, things happen in between, you know, I don't expect everybody else to be following me. In, in fact, I don't want people to be following me because the more you follow me, the more you're not doing anything. Um, you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, it's actually really good when I see people absent. That means you are they creating and relating for your audience. Jade Fraser, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you've been fine. Um, hope everything has been well for you and your business. I see a couple of photos of you here and there. Um, I haven't quite seen about your business though. You remember you asked me about the, um, you know, the online prosperity blueprint. And um, yeah, if if you've got any questions regarding how to start, scale, and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable, this is the show for it. And I see Duncan Musaka. Bonji, Amdala, Ziguenda, Panoba Sopa na Muriguti. I'm really trying to salvage the last bit of Jichewa I have left inside of me. So while everybody else is tuning in and getting ready, um, I would like to just probably introduce the show. My name is Prosper Taruvinga and I'm the founder and CEO of Live Long Digital where we literally believe that if you're running an online business, it has to be profitable and enjoyable. And um, like I just pulled out a little bit earlier on, I designed and created this four-step system that I now teach um, you know, people so that they can be able to create for and relate to an audience that they're going to be demanding money off of. So every single day um, at 2 p.m. AEST, without fail, we sit around and we talk about how you too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And on Friday like this, um, I open up, um, you know, the show so that we can all get involved and you can get to ask me questions, um, you know, just in case you might have missed out on something during the week or you want to know something that's happening. There's quite a lot happening in the online space at the moment. So if you've got any questions, I'm so much happy to fill them. And if I don't know them, I will not knock them down and then I will research on your behalf. I see Jan Clifford is here. Thank you so much. The last time we talked to you, having a gin and tonic i hope you're gonna have a fantastic weekend um you know with your loved ones there and i see liz okani has just tuned in as well liz i'm hoping that you've been 
um, you know, working busy with your business and everything else that comes along with it. And listen, um, while we're here, um, can you set up your profile on, um, on, on Abod, Lee's? so that I can tag your video, okay? So just let me know if you've got any reservations with that. If not, let's go ahead and set up a profile on uh, the Australian Business Online Directory. Now, the first question has just come in. Luke says, hey, bro, in regards to outsourcing, which I don't at the moment, but um, would you advise the clients that you're doing this? Um, half the time, it's actually really good to be transparent. You can always say that you have a team um, because people don't expect you to be doing everything yourself, especially these days. Um, we all have the pride to say, yes, I done did, um, you know, all the work, but no, 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 no. You know, clients are not stupid. You're probably going to be dealing with people like myself that understand that if you really want to do quality work, you know, somebody else, you have to have second eyes, um, you know, helping you out with your work. So you actually look stupid if you are going to be working, um, you know, on all of those things by yourself instead of actually having a team or people that can help you out. So yeah, like you said, they um, look, yeah, that question there, it's, you know, transparency. People like to do business with those they know, like, and trust and if they can trust that you you can do the job or if they can trust that you will be able to deliver um you know on your promise um i don't think they mind where the work is coming from they just want because people only worry about you know their work people only worry about the outcome people only worry about their results and how it's helping them so if you ask me um i would outsource and not even worry about it and if you're um, you know, your clients really want to know where their food is coming from, then maybe you can, you know, put it up in the ingredients there that this has been locally sourced ingredients or this has been locally sourced work, etc. etc. It actually makes it for you to um, expand as a business person. Look, because if you have five jobs at the same time, no chance in hell with your kids and your partner and your life can you fulfill all those jobs. But if you outsource, then that means you've got five more, five extra hands that are looking at, you know, your work um, as you go, um, you know, um, along. So I would advise if you can outsource, if you, if you find it hard to be honest with your clients, just try telling the truth. It's easier. People understand and especially these days, people that actually do have the money and people that are actually really, really good clients, they never, they never question anything, man. They just want their, their results. So that's a really good question, um, you know, with regards to outsourcing. I outsource most of my work. I mean, um, we would have worked together, especially with that logo, but then I changed my mind and I didn't want to keep bothering you with iterations. But at the end of the day, outsource as much as you can, as long as you're honest and you're delivering on time and you are actually delivering quite a good service and you're not, um, you know, um, over, over promising and under delivering. So yeah, be, be, yeah, I, 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 I don't see nothing wrong with that. Um, and like you're saying, you're not doing it yet. I mean, obviously everybody starts from the bottom, you know what I mean? everyone has to start from somewhere. So if your clients are not going to be understanding that you need time to grow and um, that you need time to develop all, you know, harness all those skills, then I don't think they actually understand the intensity of your work. And also with the coming of different technologies these days, um, you, you do graphic design, right? So with the coming of different technologies these days, look, um, you know, you can't know every platform, you can't know every, um, you know, skill. So some people uh, study those skills and it gets expensive to know all the photoshops or the video editing softwares. So if you can outsource, you can actually produce quality work, then you would have tried to fiddle around with, um, you know, all the, the things right there. So yeah, your customers should understand that you start from the bottom. If you're genuine with them, if you're open with them, um, they wouldn't expect a whole lot more. Um, they just want a service. And if you can deliver it, don't worry about it, man. Okay. I mean, the cliche says that, you know, when you're at your lowest or, you know, when, 
uh, when you're at the bottom, the only way is going up. So by you outsourcing, you're actually expanding your business somehow and you're getting leadership skills that would then help you with bigger clients um, that have bigger jobs or more frequent work. All right. So, you know, whether you want to be better um, on your financial standing or, you know, just have a healthier lifestyle or improve your relationships, outsource most of the work, man. Anything is possible. And there's a lot of people from, oh, you can also take on other people's work as well, depending on, on, on your speciality. All right. So um, that should be it. Thank you so much for that question. That was good. Um, who else is watching and who else has got a question? You know, you know what, you know, while we're still there, there's always this misconception that, um, you know, successful people or successful individuals, they're born with unique gifts and talents or they have to actually show up and, and have all the skills in place and that everybody has to put them on a higher pedestal than every, um, you know, the rest of us. You know, the truth is everybody starts from zero, bro. Do you know what I mean? Everybody starts from somewhere and no one is born with success. You've got kids. Um, you know, I've got a little girl, um, you know, she is three right now. And when she gets to 18 and she starts becoming a snob, I'll tell her that I was wiping her bottom, you know? So, you know, nobody's born with all these talents. You start off with boogers in your nose and uh, messing you and having accidents in your nappies. You learn and you grow as you, you go ahead. So if people are just going to expect that you're just going to turn up and become this established guy, then I don't think, I don't think they understand what's actually going on in life then. All right. And I see Paul has just tuned in. Good day, sir. Today is a different kind of show. This is the Ask and Prosper show. It goes on for an hour where we basically are talking about, um, you know, <coughs> today the, the whole theme of what we want to talk about is how do you start from the bottom and, um, you know, how do you show up? And become, you know, a, um, you know, and, and be able to serve your your clients um, that way. So we're just answering a question from Luke that says um, that talks about outsourcing. So I don't know if you've got any questions as well that we can actually, um, you know, uh, walk, talk about there. And um, you would understand, uh, Luke, if you're still watching here. It says great men are not born great. Okay, they grow great. So if you're going to have a team around you that actually helps you produce really good and remarkable work, then that's your best shot at actually winning this game. And um, you might be asking, hey, how do I grow great or how do I do all these things? Um, you know, thoughts may be daunting. Um, oh, is there a question there? Oh, Glenn says too true. Yeah. So if you've got any other questions there, let a brother know. And, um, obviously today we're talking about starting from scratch, starting from the bottom and how you can jumpstart your life. Even if you're not starting from the bottom, but you've just hit rock bottom and, um, you know, you know, um, look up and, you know, keep, keep going, um, keep going forward. I've got this mantra that I keep repeating myself. For myself is uh, it's keep moving forward. KMF. No matter what you're doing, no matter no matter what's happening around you, always stand up inside of you so that you will be able to stand everything that's going on around you. Because the one thing that really stops a lot of business people is self confidence. Like it's not self confidence that you can show up on a video like this, or it's not self confidence that you can. Um, you know, show up in a meeting or something like that. The kind of self-confidence I'm talking about is actually standing up for what you believe in. You know what I mean? No matter, no matter who around you is saying it's wrong or it's not going to work or, you know what I mean? Or you're not good enough or all those things that are happening around us. You, you really got to stand up inside of yourself. You know, when I was growing up, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, in Zimbabwe, um, there's no rules around bullies or there's no rules around, um, you know, people beating you up on the street or whatever it is. But um, um, I'm safe here, so it's actually really exciting. I'll tell you, in Zim, kids just get beaten up by all the guys and it's it's survival of the fetus it's actually a survival mechanism and um and i don't condone any of that but i'm just saying that you know our kids just grow up getting beaten and our kids grow up you know um 
and you know getting bullied etc etc and uh, what normally happens is if a kid cannot stand up for themselves if a kid cannot speak up for themselves then they're just going to be knocked down by the heavy guys you know i see charlie O'Shea, the millionaire uh, the tattooed millionaire is it is that how you call yourself it's just tuned in my man thank you so much um this show is the ask and prosper show you basically ask me questions and I will answer them. So I was still talking about how kids grow up in Zimbabwe. It's just, it's, it's barbaric, you know. It's Africa. Um, um, civilization is taking its time to get there. Um, but um, I, I was taught when I was growing up that if you uh, stand up inside of yourself, no person, no matter how big they are, no matter who they are, is ever gonna beat you down you know what i mean anybody could knock me down but i'm still standing up inside of me so it's it's just ingrown you know what i mean it's it's one of those things that i really wish that everybody gets an opportunity to feel the real person inside of them standing up for whatever injustice standing up for whatever rights they think they have standing up for their kids standing up for their own financial success you know what I mean? Because if you can't stand up from within inside of you, no matter how hard you get knocked down, um, you probably won't even be able to get back up again. So half of the things that would help you to to really, really stand up inside of yourself, because it's, it's not easy. It's not easy showing up every single day like this with a smile on my face. It doesn't mean like we, we don't have any, um, you know, any volcanoes erupting inside the house. It doesn't mean that the business is, is, is going as smooth as, 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 you know, as, as anybody else would anticipate. But it's a fact that if you are confident that no matter what's going on, it will pass. No matter what's happening to you right now, your business or your customers or your customers not signing contracts in time or not paying you on time, all of that happens, but you got to know what your end result has to be so that any small thing that, you know, is, is trivial. Do you know what I mean? So that any small thing that happens on your way is trivial. You need to really, really identify exactly what it is that you want out of life. All right. Seems like I'm talking too much. This is the Ask and Prosper Show. If you've got any questions, let a brother know. If no questions, then, you know, obviously we'll just keep, um, you know, talking about how you can actually grow and, and stand up inside of yourself. And, and especially when you're starting from rock bottom. Because, I mean, I'm, I am for this whole culture of everyone is a winner. But we all know that there is competition out there. There's always winners and there's always losers. Like, in as much as we try and deny it, there's, there's always that aspect, you know, um, of... Um, you know, when kids are playing football there, everybody gets a medal. I don't think it teaches them to actually stand up for what the real world expects off of them. Because, you know, <laughs> it's like when you're, you you know, when you're, when you're um, in, in real life, you know, there's going to be cops, there's going to be tax men, there's going to be lawyers, there's going to be um, other people that expect you to live in a certain way. You know, where... Where are the parents when the kids are actually now having to live their day-to-day -day life and pay bills and all that stuff? They won't be there, you know? So I really feel like if, if we teach our kids and if we learn from each other or from how we, we, we are creating and relating to some sort of an audience, it will, it will help us to stand strong within, within ourselves, you know? Um, Bill Parker, thank you so much for tuning in, my man. This is um, our Friday show. You get to ask me questions, um, and um, and I'll answer them. And one question that has been asked so far is about outsourcing. So um, I don't know if you've got any questions for me pertaining to how to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And um, you know, while while we're waiting for you to come through. Um, I just really want to thank you for, you know, your time and having showed up and also setting up your profile on the Australian Business Online Directory, okay? Um, it just validates what we're doing and it just makes it all all good. Now, if you've got any questions, let a brother know or if you're just watching, that's also good. Um, or you can share this video, do something, you know? I, you know, it's been a long week and I'm supposing everybody has some sort of a question or 
if people don't have questions, that means they haven't been doing much or you haven't been breaking things. So I wouldn't want to be, um, you know, amongst people that are not actually heading anywhere or doing something, um, you know, with their lives. All right. So like I was saying, sometimes when you're starting from the bottom, it's really scary. I came to Australia with nothing but a backpack full of hopes and dreams, you know what I mean? But my focus was not to stay like that. My focus was to create something I was gonna be proud of, was to create something that I was gonna will to my kids. And I'm still in creation mode, you know what I mean? Some people would say, ah, oh, you've done enough. I mean, for your age, what you've accomplished is all good, but that's not where I wanna be. Where I wanna be is a position where um, I'm sitting in my front porch and my old, you know, and I'm old and I, I can't help myself. And, um, you know, my grandkids are like, wow, granddad, you actually did something. You know what I mean? And um, if they I have a question, um, you know, they can Google what I did or what I said pertaining that particular subject. Wouldn't that be nice? And that's that's what I'm sort of trying to create, you know? So some people don't really have a focus that, that goes beyond them. And that's why it becomes hard for them to wake up every single day and put out content or wake up every single day and do something. Because if you take the burden of doing it for yourself and you do it for somebody else or even do it for other people, um, you know, in the future, it, it gives you a newly found lease or a new lease on life, you know, um, because I don't want to lie to you. We're the most documented generation, um, you know, in history. Um, our parents may be on Facebook or some sort of online footprint, but they don't have a strong presence like we actually do have. Now, can you imagine, you, you know how people are these days going in for their DNA tests and they're going in for their, um, you know, um, you know, looking out for their heritage. In, in the next 50 years or so, people will just Google Prosper Taruinga. All right. And then they'll see stuff. What would they get when they Google Charlie O'Shea? What would they get when they Google Bill Parker? What would they get when they um, Google Glenn, Glenn Ozzy? Do you know what I mean? So one of those things is maybe you don't want to do it for yourself, but do it for your own dignity, you know, do it for your own self when you can't respond in the future. And that's the reason why some people don't find that strength or the energy or the zeal to want to continue doing something or whatever business they're doing right now because they don't see monetary help right now or monetary benefits. But guess what? What are your great gang kids going to say about you? What are your, um, what are your future, you know, friends or relatives or what do you, what do you talk about at a barbecue that you say, oh my God, I made this, I fixed this, or I changed this because deep down as human beings, we have this strong yearning to make a difference that, that is beyond, you know, Everyone needs to be making a difference. And it's like one of those untalked about human desires. That's the reason why everywhere we go, we always want to leave it different to where we, 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 we saw it, you know, or, or, or we leave it better than we found it, you know. And Robert says, I Google myself often and I learned I was in a meeting napping and I woke up. <laughs> Good afternoon, Robert. How are you doing? Hope you're having a fantastic day, by the way. Today, you know, it's Friday, Ask and Prosper Show. So you can ask me questions or I can just keep ranting if nobody has any questions, which is kind of sad. And I'm just going to be talking to myself here. <laughs> we do have an hour, guys. I mean, and these are scheduled. So, But then today, the whole theme is really how do you start from the bottom? How do you start when you don't have any energy? How do you start when you don't have any connections? How do you start when you don't have any money or any capital? All of those things, you know? So one thing that I was putting out there was just identify who you want to be and reverse engineer it. You know what I mean? You want to be that person that at least did something, uh, made a difference, and then just start looking at what needs to be done in between. Who do you need to become? Who do you need to know? And half of the things that you, you want, really, you won't find them um, with other people. They're all within us. So, you know, I'd recommend if you are 
really serious about making a difference, start reading books or watching motivational stuff because the inputs that you put in your head, you will determine the outputs um, you know, that you put out there. Because if you're putting out value into the world, if you're giving value to other people, they will reciprocate. And the only way they can reciprocate these days is via their credit card, which is what we are all looking after, isn't it? You know, so, you know, just worry about giving value to people, worry about, um, yeah, you know, being helpful, being an absolute good human. And then when you take care of the people, the money will take care of itself. That's pretty much what I've realized in my experience in business and especially working in an area like Australia where I just came here and I knew nobody and um, I started all from zero and you know now I've got something that I can at least talk about in a platform that I'm creating for those that really want to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now Robert says um, I gave Charles Betterton a reason to smile today. Good for you, man. Good for you. Good for you. All right. Um, so one of the other things that you do is to also identify what you really want in your life. You know, you can't copy other people's expectations. You can't copy other people's definition of success. You can't, um, you know, copy other people's, you know, way of living, etc., etc. Now, Glenn says, I feel you. Uh, you've lost your way towards something you've worked for ages, perhaps even years, you would completely stop and revalue to keep forcing through and hope you find your passion again. Oh, okay. So if you feel like you've lost your way or spirit towards something you've worked on for, for ages, um, perhaps even years, um, would you completely stop or reevaluate or keep forcing through and hope you find your passion again? Half of the time, if you've lost your passion with something, um, if you've lost your passion with something, maybe that thing was not really meant to be. Because if I feel like if you really want something to exist or if something really needs to be there, it, it, it will show up and it will find a way to, to, to exist. So figure out... Um, why did you start that thing in the first place, Glenn? Can you type in the comments why you started that thing in the first place? Um, because this could be a bit sensitive, but all I know is passions really never die and values really never die. Um, what dies is the need for that thing to exist in the world. Because you could have been passionate about developing film like Kodak, but at the time at where we are in life, it's no longer needed. Do you know what I mean? So maybe you then naturally lose the zeal to want to continue with that aspect. So let me know what got you started in that thing in the first place. Maybe that would make a difference. Okay. Robert says, would you say that reaching out in gratitude to someone that has made a difference in your life to thank them uh, for something that they did uh, that you hadn't thanked them for before? Well, obviously gratitude opens up a lot of doors um, gratitude, gratitude, gratitude really is, um, one of those things that helps you get ahead. Um, if you're not thankful, then you are dead inside. And half of the things that a lot of people don't do or never have is people coming back to them and saying, because of you, I, um, you know, um, you know, uh, you saved my life or something like that. So, it is a good feeling. So I would suggest that if you can and if you know somebody that you need to thank, um, go ahead and do that. And I see Shingirai Kuponiera wants to jump on the video. Shingirai, thank you so much, my man. Um, the video that I'm creating right now, you won't be able to jump on. I, I don't have that much bandwidth, but thank you so much. Rufamber, hope you're having a fantastic day where you're at there. All right. So, so Robert, uh, like I'm saying... Um, Robert says, I'm sorry for that oddly formed question. I'm just waking up from falling asleep in a chair during a hangout. Ah, uh, that's all right. That's all right. Um, yeah, as long as you, I mean, obviously you're talking about gratitude. Um, I went on a journey to thank a teacher that, um, you know, showed me the light and, uh, and um, you know, that's the thing that was televised on Channel 9. So um, I do appreciate and I would also think that if I've done something for someone, 
you know, that would come around and, and, and say, hey, listen, thank you so much for doing this. Because not only do we need to leave, learn and contribute, the more we contribute to others, the more we actually feel like we are fulfilled. So if people are actually appreciating, um, you know, the work that we're doing, it makes it for um, doing it a whole lot more. Because, yes, people can appreciate with their credit card or with money, but money, money can be spent. Money can, um, you know, money vanishes, you know. Uh, but if somebody actually speaks to you and says, hey, Robert, thank you so much. On such a day, you did such a thing um, that helped me, um, you know, escape this. Because everybody in life, Robert, you would understand, is always trying to run away from some kind of pain. So, um, you know, if you have the antidote to any sort of pain that somebody could be going through, you know, you, you would have helped them big time. All right. Now, Glenn says, I still want to help and motivate and inspire others, but my heart is pulling me towards wanting to help the wildlife as much or even more. I started for the same reasons as now. Those reasons still exist, um, which is to be somewhat a pillar of hope for others. Okay. You see, the thing is, if, if, you, if you are there to help wildlife and it fulfills you, then that, that should be it. But if you want to be a pillar of hope for other people, at least people can comprehend and say thank you. With what life, it's more of a selfish endeavor of which, yes, you're helping them. But naturally, let me tell you something. Animals belong in the wild and they survive. They're better off by themselves anyway. So if the wildlife is in a sanctuary, then I don't think I feel personally you're not helping I feel personally you're actually torturing them just for the satisfaction of other human beings. So, yeah, it's it's. A, I'm African man, and we and our animals live in in, in the jungle. So, um, <laughs> so let let me know where these animals are gonna be. Are they in a sanctuary or are they, um, you know, in the wildlife in their own habitat? And um, naturally, I, I I don't think. Animals need help unless maybe there's poachers or people that are hurting them. Then maybe that's when you can help them. But when it comes to survival and um, animals have their own instincts and us as human beings, we think we're smarter than them and we want to change the way they live and then, you know, create jobs for ourselves, you know, just so we can fulfill our own personal endeavor. So I'm sorry if I'm not answering this question well, but that's just how I feel, man. Um, you know, if you've got an opportunity to help other people, at least people will bury you, my man. People will cry at your funeral, you know. Animals will just be there. They'll continuously want food. Animals will continuously survive. And yes, you're saving a species, but if you really want fulfillment in life, I feel like if you can help your fellow human beings to be, do, and have a happier existence, that way, my friend, you will get a whole lot more than you could ever get from Simba, who is locked up in a cage. It's only to create more awareness and conservation, not to take them from the wild. Awareness and conservation, yep, yeah, absolutely. I mean, us as human beings, we have... I know in Africa, they are taking away elephant tusks, rhino horns, and, you know, all that, all that jazz. And, um, you, you know what I mean? But... At the end of the day, the more we try and control anything as human beings, the more we ruin it, actually. Um, because they're surviving in, in, in their own habitat. they um getting to know about them um, is okay, is, is good, the conservation, but it takes a lot of time, money, and effort instead of you just smiling at a human being. Um, and I feel like... Half of the time when, when people go out of their way to go and save some sort of koala that doesn't need saving in the first place while your fellow human being is suffering down the road. I mean, it's values. It's, it's, it's more to do with who you are as a person. But um, that's maybe the reason why you, you're, losing, you're losing the zeal for it. Because yes, we might be passionate about animals, but... When you're flying, man, you put your mask on first. You know what I mean? <laughs> you put your mask on first, you know? It's, it's just us human beings think we can control other species. And, um, yeah, that's the reason why maybe your soul is refusing. Because 
you know, no, no species is better than any other species, you know, and yeah, so it's, it's just how I feel like, I mean, I mean, I'm, yeah, it's, and also the thing about conservation is the more people know about the habitats of animals and lions, etc, etc, the more they want to hunt them, because where energy goes, money flows, you know what I mean, so that's just how I feel. I mean, evaluate how is it really, really satisfying you as a person and um, yeah, and figure out is it something that is really needed in the world because your soul won't let you do things that are not needed in the world. You know what I mean? Um, it's just one thing that I know from what I've read. So yeah, and, 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 and maybe I could be wrong because most people equate success or fulfillment with helping other people be to and have a happier existence. But sometimes, sometimes some people don't need to be helped. Sometimes some animals don't need to be helped. So figure out what, 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 what fulfillment would you get from that? Or is it, is it the fact that Steve Irving was a hero doing it? So maybe that part is still, you know, triggering that need to find, um, uh, what do you call it, to find, um, you know, for people, for, to find respect amongst some people, I'm not sure, man, but, um, you would know, you would know what, what success means to you, um, and if, if what you're doing makes you happy, makes you a better person, then I would, I would suggest you go ahead and do it, um, but, in other words, just rather focus on you. Focus on become the become a better person so that you can be a good human to the rest of the world. So be it for people or for animals, work on you first. Figure out do I need to be this person in order to achieve what I want to achieve? And you can't find external happiness without, you know, having it within within yourself. So Look, look deep inside of you, Glenn, first and figure out am, am, who am I as a person and where do I need to be? And before labeling what you need to do, you actually really need to know who you need to become. Maybe that works. I'm not quite sure. But um, yeah, it, it's something that I probably think uh, you should work on, really. Personal development. And then from then on, you rewire your inputs, you know, like right now, you know, your life could be filled with a lot of negative influences that are now tearing you away from what was good for you. And, you know, you could have people that can ha that can be encouraging you. You see, the thing is, I'm really trying not to because I know it's sensitive for you. you. You've lost the passion, but I also really want to know that is it something that's needed in the world? Because people can only be passionate about something that's viscerally needed in the world, you know, something that leaves the world a better place, you know, so if, question yourself on your values and um, how you can actually be to and have, first of all, a happier existence, and then second of all, you will find your, your middle ground, and um, yeah, it, this is this is not an easy question, because because then this is something you've done all your life and I can't just, you know, sit here and, 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 and just say whatever I think. But I just feel like work on you first, Glenn. Work on your internal person. Get a moral GPS about you. Know who's around you. What influences are around you. Do you have encouraging voices that are actually fostering your growth? And um, if not, it's really time to rethink, um, you know, where you're spending your time and your resources, all of those things, Glenn. Do you know what I mean? Because one of the biggest challenges um, for those that are really, really starting from the bottom is, is the inability to remove harmful influences in their lives. So I don't want to be that person that also is a nagging Sally, um, you know, in your, in your voice. Now, Glenn says, uh, do you think the two can be intertwined, perhaps the motivational events to raise funds towards conservation efforts. You see, now you are going inside of you. Now you are going, you, now you are finding that equilibrium, you know, where you can do both. 
and 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 but then for you to become that person you have to grow that person inside of you that can stand in front of crowds and talk about things that actually matter to them so i think i think we're getting somewhere with this you know and uh, robert says glenn once you know who you are this question will answer itself absolutely do you know what i mean it, it, it is one it is one question to find, to try and find answers from other people, but if you know exactly who you are, what you're capable of, and who needs what you're dishing out, brother, you will you will do a whole lot. I see Stephen Seddon has just tuned in. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, my man. <clears throat> so, if I was you, Glenn, I would actually guard my brain and and see the inputs that i'm actually receiving on a daily basis and those things are now the the you know the the the, the you know the, the the books that you read the content that you consume those are now what then gui guides your character and your legacy in life you know because right now people might think legacy is what you say on your deathbed but you have to start crafting it now you know the 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 the, 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 the people you touch the the animals you save, whatever is going to be your story, start crafting it now, but you have to accept it within yourself that I'm the person that's going to be known for this. You know? Because if you want to improve your circumstances, you really got to take control of what you feed in your mind daily. And then from then on, you will now have the due diligence of knowing that a fire can be good for cooking, but if you touch it, it burns you. Because right now, you you might want a surefire way of knowing which one, A or B, but in life, there's never A or B. Do you know what I mean? There's always two of the same kind. There's always a zebra and a horse. There's always something that resembles, um, you know, um, something within the universe. You know what I mean? Left or right, yin and yang. So you can't really have this definite answer, um, you know, uh, or, or, or this definite way of things that are, are being done, you know what I mean? So just take control of what you feed your mind daily. And from then on, I, I believe the answers, the how will come, the, the way will come off and it will morph into each other, you know, and you will soon find out that maybe all you just got to do is, like you say, do motivational talks um, you know, that have a, a conservation effect to them, you know, and whatever you do, surround yourself with people that are already where you want to reach out to, because then those people will give you an, a, an analogy or they will save you time, money and effort trying to learn all those things. And normally if those people are positive people, they encourage you to grow in the direction that they see possible, you know, and, um, All oh, right. So Glenn says, thanks, Prosper. You've helped more than uh, you can imagine, my friend. Sorry for taking so long f uh, for comments and questions. Broadcast keeps getting interrupted from bad weather here in Brisbane. Oh, <laughs> all right. Absolutely, man. Uh, hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully it works. And for those that are really tuning in and watching this, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult question, really. But I think it's more to do with who you are internally. And, um, you know, do you spend your time reading great books or listening to inspiring podcasts or watching some of my shows? You know, if not, you need to rewire your inputs so that you can jumpstart your journey to the top. Half of these questions are usually a lack of research on the part of the, the person who's, who's, you know, faced with this predicament. Because if you have the prior knowledge, you would know where to start, really. And if you know yourself really, really, really um, being at the bottom like you are right now or like anybody else is watching right now, it's actually the best place to start because you're starting off on a blank canvas and then you can now create the photo or you can now create the painting in the way that you want it to be. I think it's Michelangelo, the guy who does the remarkable Roman sculptures he when was when he was asked how he thinks of you know what um, you know statue to create, he just mentioned and said, "I just take off the stone that's not needed, and then the statue is inside." 
So figure out, you've got a whole big block of marble right now there, Glenn, and then just take off the little pieces that are not needed and you will find you, the ultimate warrior, inside that piece of marble. So when you're like starting fresh, you know, you've got a clean slate to work with and it's easy for you to go either way. And all things are possible for you right now. And it's it's only a matter of what are you going to decide and what are you going to stick with? Because it's also not just having the right direction, but are you going to stick with it long enough for it to actually start making sense? Because it, tw it takes 21 years to be 21 years old, you know? So you literally, from now on, can build either the conservation side or the human motivation side from the ground up. But, you know, like any other person, you know, people like J.K. Rowling, who went on to build an, 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 an unparalleled Harry Potter empire, something that never existed in the whole world. So you might be asking the wrong question. You might be asking the wrong person. What you need to be asking is, what do I need to become in order to be that which I think is possible for me? And I think from then on, all of these things, the iPhone never existed. It existed in somebody's brain, but he managed to bring it out by working hard and putting in the work. All of the things that we're sitting on, they never existed. You know, Thomas Edison and his light bulbs, um, you know, the guys that created the thermometer, all of those, uh, Alexander Graham Bell with the telephone. It was things that were stuck in their head and they didn't know how to go about it. But you know what they did? They went in, sat down, researched, look at what other people that were before them did. And then they went out there and put in their own, um, you know, feel to it. And then from then on, whoop, we now have all these new experiments. So you might just craft your own genre of conservation motivation. It actually rhymes, doesn't it? Conservation motivation. You know, and um, yeah, because what 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 we all have out here now was created by people that are no smarter than you are, Glenn. So if you are in a position to actually have an idea and think about it, because I think the lack of motivation and the, and the loss of passion that you're experiencing is a matter of you not knowing what to do next and what, knowing, not knowing what to do next is usually a result of not taking action or not having prior knowledge as to is it possible or is it not because i think before 1956 um people didn't know that you could run a mile in four minutes but roger bannister what did he do he passed the four minute mile and guess what happened everybody else can now run a mile in under four four minutes so you do your own roger bannister be the the, 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 the pioneer of whatever genre you want to create. Because right now, maybe you're trying to compare other people's finish to your own start, you know? So at the end of the day, you might not find what you really want in between because they're not you. They're not Glenn. All right? Now, Stephen has a question. Stephen says, the last boat I supplied was for DOC, Department of Conservation. Right, right. So, so maybe you can be like Jesus who was preaching on a boat. So talk to Stephen, <laughs> get a boat and be the motivator that talks, <laughs> that talks on a boat. <laughs> I think. <laughs> ah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So, yeah, just realize that what you have is a blessing in disguise, my man. You know, because you can choose from now on what you want your life to be. That's the best part because some of us are now too legit to quit. I can't be seen starting up something else. I mean, I'm still young too. But, you know, if you're finding yourself still umming and ahhing and trying to figure out what to do or who to become, you know, when where you are right now is, 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 is good. So instead of you sitting around and wallowing and fathoming how you're going to get out of this rut, Look for how far you can actually, um, you know, go and, and, and start looking for people that have, um, you know, prior knowledge to that aspect, you know. And one other thing that I think everybody needs to understand 
here is just take 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 your eyes off yourself. You know, take your eyes off yourself. Do something for others or do something um for 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 the world. And then you will notice that the passion starts going um you know, start starts you know, because when you're needed, as human beings, we crave to be needed. We crave to be of importance. And that's the reason why we then go and try and domesticate animals or we try and, uh, and, and, and make animals, you know, part of our daily survival. Because at least we can talk to them. You can tell a dog to come and it comes. You throw a, a, a stick at it and then it goes. You know what I mean? So... I feel like right before, you know, you, you, you're starting from the bottom or you hit rock bottom, you know, we, we're usually drowning in self-pity. We're usually comparing ourselves to what other people have already achieved. And the beautiful thing about, you know, actually starting from the bottom is that you, you realize very, very quickly how futile or how unimportant self-pity or blaming others can be. Do you know what I mean? It's not important at all. You know, you may, you may, you know, for the first time in your life, take responsibility for your circumstances and you actually start realizing that, you know, they, there are others that are actually much more worse than you. So get out, get out of yourself for a minute, figure out how can I be of so much value? How can I be the most helpful person I know? And before you know it, you start finding what it is that you actually want to do. Now, Robert says, I was heading down the road of depression again, and the only thing that lifted me out was reaching out to lift others and strangers for friends. You see, the thing about the thing about depression is, I, I feel like, I mean, I, I, I say this with respect, but the thing about depression is, I feel like it's, it's, it's you not really living out to your full potential and expecting, expecting a lot out of other people instead of reaching out and being responsible for your own actions and your own results. And I, I say this with utmost respect. I've never really felt it, or maybe I, I have, but I've never really accepted it. Um, but I feel like if you really want to be of service and if you stop just thinking about yourself, there won't be any reason to feel depressed, really. You go out there, there's other people that are even far worse than you are. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, and, and there's a whole story that you start telling yourself that it runs in my family, but you can, you can always leave that family. You know what I mean? Um, you can always go somewhere where, where there's none of that. Just be around people that influence you, people that lift you up, you know, and stop having a pity party. I'm yeah, for me, yeah, I, I don't know. It's yeah, it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a rough one right there. So just going back to what I was saying, um, you know, when you when you starting when you starting out, especially in business, um, yeah, you see now you're taking it as a personal thing, which is what I I don't want, you know, um. Half of the time, if you really want to be of help, extend a hand to somebody in need. You know, you, you actually realize that you are actually much more fortunate, um, you know, than other people. And what you might think is starting off from a baseline is, is probably somebody's nirvana. All right. So figure out where you are you know, do a personal audit. What do you really want to happen in your life? And you've got really nothing to lose. You know what I mean? Because excuses sound best to the person that's actually telling them, you know, and when you actually hit the reset button in your life, um, uh, you know what? Yeah. I knew this time was gonna, I knew this day was gonna come and yeah, it has at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's just, you, you don't have anything to lose. Um, and when you hit the reset button in your life, um, starting from the bottom is usually the best thing you can actually do because you've got fewer choices and um, you, you can't always rise back up. I'd, I'd love to hear your story. I'd love to hear, um, you know, your challenges. I'd love to hear where you are right now and where you've been and how far you've gone 
um, you know, with starting your business, especially in 2018, because I know it's not easy. And I know some people take it really personally. And um, but at the end of the day, you know, like I said earlier on, we're not all going to be, you know, the number one, you know, just figure out how good are you at doing certain things. And if you can outsource the rest, it will make it a whole lot easier. Um, Because if you if you're not understanding um, your own personal um, self right now, it will be difficult for other people to understand you. So all you really, really need to do is find out who are you, who can you serve and how best can you be of service to them? And once you've figured out that part, it becomes very, very easy, um, you know, for you to be doing, have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. I, I really am going to put out a disclaimer. Um, you know, I, I'm not saying I, I know it all, but there's a certain level of you know, of being human, where you actually know, yes, you are just putting out excuses out there, um, you know, and, and that's the reason I, I'm not, I'm not going to be sitting around and, and have negative people around me just because it's easy, you know, um, I, I really want people that are heading somewhere because like, it's, like, like they say, you're an average of five people that hang around you, you know what I mean? Why are you there to let me down? I'm not there to let you down, so... You know, and I understand that everybody starts from the bottom. Everyone does start from the bottom. But that's not where you're meant to be. That's not where you stay. You know, and there's a cliche that when you are at your lowest, the only way is to go up. So figure out who am I? Where am I? What do I need to do? Who do I need to serve? And how can I reach out to them? From then on, the how will come. The way will come. Do you know what I mean? Whether you want to be better financially or a healthier lifestyle or just improve your relationships, anything is possible. Even if you've hit rock bottom, even if you have no capital to start off from, even if you have no friends, even if nobody knows who you are, because that's where I started from. Just reach out with your talent, reach out with, with your expertise, reach out with your knowledge, somebody out there is waiting to hear from you. Somebody out there is waiting to know what you can help them with. You know, because like I was saying, there's always this misconception, you know, that um, people that are successful, you know, they're born with these unique gifts and um, and they have these talents and, and they place people on a higher pedestal than, than the rest of us. You know what I mean? But the truth is everybody starts from zero. You know, everybody starts from zero. You know, and no one is born into success. We're all born to wear diapers, boogers out of our noses, etc., etc. If you've got kids, you actually notice what I'm talking about. We lose it as we grow. You know, like my little girl can do anything. You know, but we we lose it as we grow older. So go in there and find that inner child because that inner child is still yearning to do all the things that you wished you wanted to do. I want to hear your story. I want to high five with you at the end of this, um, you know, lifetime and, you know, and then congratulate you for having had a good run. Because there's no point in you just being on earth and not really utilizing all your talents and sitting around there and wallowing in in pity party and, and hoping that some people would have time for that. Nobody has time for that. Great men are not born. They grow great. So you've got all this time to grow into that person that you really want to be. Because right now what you're doing by not showing your talent or not showing your expertise is you're being selfish. That thing that you were supposed to create is lacking in the world right now because you didn't show up to to, 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 to prove it. So this is my week. It's done. Thank you so much for those that have tuned in. Um, it's one of those things that, you know, you, you are in control of who you want to be. So don't expect somebody to come and knock on your house's door and say, Hey, listen, it's about time. We're always going to be showing you love, but we're not going to come and clean up after you, you know? So if you enjoyed this show, please share it. And if there's anything I can do to help, don't hesitate to reach out. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your um, weekend and thank you so much um, for your time.